BSmart is a, is a consortium that addresses Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is, uh, is a disease where already in Europe alone, seven million uh, patients are suffering from, and currently there's no cure with, uh, with all the treatments that are currently available. Um, and as a result, we set out on a journey to try and tackle that uh, with a new kind of drug, SIRNA, and a new kind of way of reaching the brain, and that is uh, through the uh, cerebrospinal fluid barrier. Uh, and by that, we hope to deliver more of the drug at the site where it should be, namely in the brain. This has been, uh, been made possible uh, during the past five and a half years by a European consortium uh, that was spread out all over Europe. And uh, well, we collaborated on uh, this exciting uh, topic. We had three different stages. The first one is really to bring together all the individual components that need to, to form the, uh, the, uh, the therapeutic, basically. So on the one hand, that's the active ingredient. It's a very sensitive active ingredient, so it needs to be encapsulated, and we encapsulate them into nanoparticles, and we have different kinds of those. And then we had a, a, a key, basically, a targeting ligand on the surface of those nanoparticles that functions as a key to open the door to the brain, uh, and that is the a nanobody um, that uh, opens the door to the cerebrospinal fluid barrier and then enters uh, the brain. Uh, the University Medical Center in Utrecht was responsible for designing the, the siRNA, which is the active ingredient uh, uh, within the particle. And siRNA can basically target any pathogenic messenger RNA that causes the production of pathogenic proteins, uh, basically in any disease, but also then in uh, neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. Uh, and it's, it's very straightforward to use a computer and generate sequences that could be active and uh, that can later on be tested. We had three different types of particles and, and we started with the most established uh, particles. Those are the lipid nanoparticles. And again, University Medical Center in Utrecht was uh, involved in designing those. And those are really the, the current state of the art, basically. And uh, what we do is we, we have the siRNA and we let it be complexed by, by lipids and form these uh, lipid nanoparticles that are currently also used, for example, in the COVID-19 uh, vaccines. There's the, the second type of particles, those are the emerging particles. They are less well established, but they offer exciting new prospects. Uh, one of them is 20MET Therapeutics. Um, it's a company in, in the Netherlands that develops nanogels that could also encapsulate siRNAs and deliver them. Uh, and also the University of Santiago de Compostela has been involved. They develop nanocapsules, nanoenvelopes, uh, nanoemulsions, uh, and they can also form that same protective layer around the siRNA in order to uh, be able to deliver it. And they also explored a novel delivery route that is through the nose to reach uh, the brain, which is also an exciting new way of delivering drugs. The third type of particles that we investigated were the extracellular vesicles, and those are really the experimental uh, stuff. It's, it's really not ready for clinical exploitation, but it's, it's really an exciting new way of biological nanoparticles that can deliver RNA. Um, so again, University Medical Center in Utrecht was involved as, uh, in uh, collaboration with the University of Oxford and VIB, the Flemish Institute for Biotechnology, uh, and they collaborated on this experimental uh, type of, uh, of nanocarriers that are uh, basically harvested from cells and also can deliver siRNA. Uh, so we had our three types of, uh, of uh, nanoparticles, uh, the established, the emerging and the uh, experimental uh, nanoparticles, uh, but they need to be able to reach the brain and one of the ways to do that is attach a targeting ligand on the surface and uh, the VIB, Flemish Institute Biotechnology, they develop nanobodies that can bind to the folate receptor. The brain n uh, does need a lot of folate and as a result expresses a lot of receptors on its brain cerebrospinal fluid barrier to get the folate into the brain. Uh, and by attaching a nanobody on the surface of a nanoparticle, you can take advantage of that and, and deliver a payload into the brain through the choroid plexus. So in the second step of the uh, consortium, we have assembled our nanocarriers with the uh, targeting ligand and with the active payload. Uh, but now they need to be tested. And first, the first thing that you need to test is whether you've made proper nanoparticles. Uh, and that, uh, well, there are a range of tests that need to be performed in order to establish the structure of the nanoparticles that you've made. And that's really important because you want to build a relationship between the structure of the nanoparticle and the activity that it ultimately showed. And Syntef was involved uh, together with Mal and analytical to investigate the different technologies that you can use to really interrogate the structure of the particle to be able to couple that later on to the activity that it shows uh, in vivo. And for example, Malvern Panalytical were involved in uh, establishing the SOPs um, that are really necessary to have the same 
type of, of experimental interrogation of the structure of these particles so that um, we can really use the collective data of all the different partners to establish this, uh, this framework. The final uh, phase of the project was really to, to make it into a product and to be able to, to, um, to use it on an industrial scale. And our industrial partner, Ibi Lorenzini from Italy, uh, they were responsible for designing the industrial scale-up process. And they, they, in fact, even designed the GMP plant that would allow us to produce this on, uh, on, uh, in a high scale. Uh, and finally, we also needed to test the therapeutic efficacy, but also the safety uh, of our nanocarriers. Uh, and for that, the Flemish Institute of Biotechnology, University of Oxford and University Medical Center of Utrecht uh, were involved to, to, to have models, both of the disease and wild type, uh, in order to investigate the efficacy and also to, uh, to interrogate the safety of our uh, nanocarriers. And uh, over the past six years, we, we collaborated intensively uh, with, uh, with all the partners and, and all the partners were really necessary to arrive at the, uh, the final stage of, uh, of Be Smart. Uh, I think it's, it's really great to see that, that we've established this blood cerebral spinal fluid barrier as a new gateway for drugs to enter the brain. And well, this may be used for sRNA and nanocarriers, but could also be used for a variety of other drugs. So it's really an enabling technology to deliver drugs into the brain. Um, and secondly, um, I think we also help to develop a new generation of, uh, of sRNA nanocarriers. And that is really important for the next phase of sRNA therapeutics. So it's, it's really a, a, a great success to, uh, to see that these uh, technologies have come out of uh, BSmart.